In this standing session, we're going to go through the gates of the elbows. And the elbows are going to be key to releasing the head, the neck, and the shoulders, and connecting down through the wrists and the hands, so completing a big energetic flow. The challenge when you stand for longer periods in this position with the arms by the, th the sides is that if your elbows go dead, it can kind of shut down the neck and shoulders. And so the hands will go dead and you won't get the same kind of fullness. So I'm going to take you through some strategies for keeping the elbows open and then we'll work on dissolving the gates of the elbows themselves. But first... <laughs> Just settle in and get the weight and pressure down through the feet. So get more and more comfortable, even if you don't fall into the same depth every time or it takes a few more minutes to settle in, get comfortable with this idea of finding the balance point where you feel connected to the ground. So whatever your best method is for bringing the weight into the centers of the feet, relaxing the ankle, knee, and hip joints, and more and more letting the weight of the torso through the spine, through the sacroiliac joints, through the joints of the pelvis, letting the weight of the upper body fall through the weight and structure of the lower body. There are a lot of subtle holding patterns you'll encounter through the hips, through the quad, through the pelvis. They're essentially keeping the weight from dropping through the structure. So releasing those as much as you can, and we'll get to those actual gates later on. Right now, just thinking about it from a structural point of view, for what you can release and relax and settle into. Now, once you feel planted, starting to bring the awareness, just lightly lengthening from the base of the spine all the way up through the rib cage, through the shoulders, through the neck until you get to the crown of the head. Settling at the crown to gather your awareness in and start to listen for the lightness and the right quality you need to dissolve the energy of the gates as you move through your body. So get stable now and settled with the right kind of quality of mind, the right kind of awareness at the crown of the head, finding that gate. Now coming down through the temples and the third eye. Just checking in with some light dissolving. And this process that we're working through you don't try to go back into these higher gates as intensely and as deeply as we will when we get to the elbows today. Just check in.
down now through the gates of the eyes, behind the eyes if you can feel it. the ears as well. Feeling through the face, the jaw, and now from the place where the tongue touches the roof of the mouth, clear the whole channel down the front of the body through to the sternum. Feeling the gate at the throat notch. And you begin to access the energy around the heart as well. Now feeling through the neck, the spaces in the vertebrae, that's where you want to release and let go. Coming all the way down to the base of the neck. And as you get into the neck and the shoulders with the dissolving, remember it has to stay light. There'll be other practices that we'll do where we want a heaviness and a sinking feeling. And that's what we'll do everything below the elbows with today. But because so many of us hold tension in the neck and shoulders, there's this tendency to try to go in, release muscles, and dig out the kinks. That's not what this process is about, and that's not how the method works for resolving energetic blockages in the body. So now as you feel into the shoulders, feel the tips of the shoulders, and just land your mind on them as lightly as possible.
And then to the front of the shoulder. And shoulders nest, finding the centers. then you have to maintain or you'll have a residual kind of awareness on the top of the shoulder or the shoulder's nest but also now direct maybe 70 or 80 percent of your awareness or more to the shoulder blade and try to feel the interface between the shoulder blade and the rib cage feel those surfaces And find the center of the shoulder blade on that side. And as your mind gets closer into it, you might notice that it's wants to jump or it's hard to kind of land on that spot. So you're learning this balance between directing the mind somewhere and holding it in a way that's a little more open-ended so that where your mind's going and what the physical and energetic sensations are sort of have an alignment of their own. They come into alignment. And that's really where a lot of the energy begins to release. So from the top of the shoulder, the front of the shoulder, the shoulder blade, now bring your mind into the center where all those points would meet if you connected them and sort of feel up into the armpit cavity from underneath. And find the place at the top of the side channels where you sort of feel the whole shoulder gets organized around this gate. And now, feeling down from the shoulders, feel to the elbows. And at the elbow, there are several minor gates that surround the joint, and then one major gate inside the center of the joint. And so the, pr the approach is to, just like we did with the shoulder, really establish everything around the gate first before you try to feel into the center. And before we get into the gates specifically, I want you to pay attention to the way 
how you hold the elbows and the way that you hold them, what influence it has on the neck and the shoulders. So you may find that you need to slightly retract the elbows. If the elbows are hanging too much, almost locked in kind of a dead hang, that will tug on the shoulders and it will shut down the shoulder joints and pull on tissues in the neck that will also begin to close the space in the neck. So either by pulling the elbows back slightly, think about them spreading outward, increasing the bend ever so slightly. If you feel that, create a lightness through the shoulders, through the neck, up to the crown of the head, that's your elbow position. And you may find that you have to continuously reset that as you stand, just because of the way that gravity is working on your arms in this posture. So now, feeling the crook of the elbow, feel above and below the joint on the inside of the elbow. There are four minor gates on each on the crook of the elbow, one on each side of the midline, one above, one below. And then on the elbow tip, above the tip, below the tip, either side of the joint, and again, four on the outside, above left and right, below left and right. So it's on the surface of the body, on the outside. And now on either side of the joint, inside and outside, the two surfaces we haven't touched on yet, instead of being above and below, this is in line with the fold of the elbow, with the crease of the elbow. Now, moving the mind in from all the gates on the outside in towards the center of the joint. Trying to find the deepest center point you can feel in the elbow joint. But again, holding some awareness on the surface joints so that what you find in the center has a way to release and let go and resolve. So don't let everything crumple in on itself, fold in on itself. Maintain awareness of the surrounding of the outside as the mind also moves in towards the inside.
and you'll feel like you lose one of the surfaces on the outside as you get pulled into the inside. Try to keep a sense of balanced pressure or feel all the way around the edges as you work your mind on the inside. I know that's not easy to do, but that's going to help all the deep stuff in the elbow release. And feel the difference between the left side and the right side. Again, this can help you balance the body and open up stuck spots that you can't figure out how to get to otherwise. So if something is open and easy on the left and that same area, sort of mirror place, is closed on the right, try to feel, balance them by feel. Make the right side feel like the left side. Model an open part of the body to a corresponding closed part of the body. And you'll sort of intuitively adjust and feel your way through it. So now take any sense of anything that hasn't dissolved, hasn't released, hasn't let go in the elbow and let it sink down through the forearms, down through the wrists, and down through the hands. So it's like you drop it, you let it go, and you set up a sense of flow from the elbow through the forearm, wrist, hands, and fingertips. And keep that there as you feel that same sense of dropping and letting go from below the shoulders through the rib cage down into the belly. So we're going height by height, but I want you to set up a kind of cascading drop as you let the energy release through the fingers, pull towards the fingertips pool in the belly, dropping everything above, down through and down below. Feeling into the hips, into the joints of the pelvis, the bowl of the pelvis, letting it spread and feel through the hip joints. So there's a widening that goes on in the hips and pelvis. If anything through that height of the body feels contracted at this point, if the legs are getting tired or it's harder for you to stand, try to release it outward. Don't think about dropping down at first. At this height, think about expansion and opening. And that will naturally lead you 
to a sense of dropping the weight through the pelvis into the legs and the thighs. And then again, when you get to the knee joint, don't try to jam everything down through the knee. Let the knee relax and spread open so that it, there's nothing inside the knee that impedes the dropping through. You don't have to drop the knee itself. You just let stuff fall through the knee into the lower legs. Relaxing the muscles of the shins and the calves as much as you can. And then again at the ankle, letting it spread open, letting everything fall into it and through it. It's flooding through your feet. Relaxing the joints and the bones of the feet. And finishing with the sense of softening the interface between the feet and the floor so that whatever is primed to fall through your whole system to release throughout everything from the crown of the head that you've loosened and let go of a little bit, it's all primed to drain into the earth. And you'll naturally recycle it. It'll naturally... The upcurrent is not a problem. You'll get as much energy as you need. This is a clearing out process, a feeding into that recycling. So just spend the last minute or so here softening that interface between the feet and the floor, letting it spread out and go easy. And once that connection feels easy and complete, you can make a smooth transition into your moving practice or whatever else you're going to go about for the rest of the day. Well done.